Hey, how's it going? Congratulations on your new griddle. Maybe you just got it for Christmas. Maybe you got it for Father's Day. Maybe you had a rough week at work and you decided that you needed to buy yourself a griddle and a six pack of beer. I want you to know I firmly support that decision. My name is Johnny and I've worked in food service my entire life. I am not a chef, but I do cook. I worked, spent two years as a manager slash grill cook at Bob Evans. So I know a little bit of thing or two about the flat top. My entire channel is about cooking on the flat top and I wanted to share with you what I think is the number one most important thing for new flat top owners that no one talks about enough. I don't feel like it's talked about enough. It's not seasoning. Everybody wants to know about seasoning. It's not cleaning. It's not what oil to use or cook with. Um, spoiler alert, use whatever oil you got in your fridge. You don't need to spend all day worrying about oil, but that's another video for another time. But no, the most important thing for new griddle owners is temperature control, temperature. Because if you start burning all your food, then it doesn't matter that you got a brand new griddle, that it, instead of becoming what you wanted to become, this cool thing to make breakfast for your family or make fried rice or cheesesteak, then you just have one bad experience and you don't use it again. So I don't want you to have that. I don't want you to have a bad experience. I want you to have a good experience and start using it again. So there's really three things with temperature you need to know. You need to know what temperature you're cooking certain foods at. You need to know how to get your specific griddle to that temperature. What are different ways to do that? And you need to know how to read the temperature. Ah, there's a little tool for that. It's called a thermometer. So let's start with what temperatures you're cooking certain foods at. I got a little PDF I'll put on the screen. I'll also put a link in the description to download this along with five beginner recipes, but it just goes over the generic temperatures. It's like 300 to 325, this is where you cook your eggs at and where I like to toast my bread. And this is just the way I do it. This is the way I was taught when I was at Bob Evans as a grill cook, it's part of their training. So it's what I'm sharing with you. Other people may have different ways, but this is the way I do it. Anyways, eggs, 300 to 325. You want your eggs low and slow. You also want to do your eggs last. You want your toast low and slow when you're toasting buns or buttering bread or doing a sandwich. I mean, you can do it higher. It's just going to be like, snap, it's done. You're trying to do a grilled cheese on the griddle. All of a sudden your bread's burnt before your cheese has even had any time to remotely melt. So toast and bread, eggs, I do all that around 300 to 325. Sometimes I'll even just cut a burner off and cook the eggs on the residual heat as it cools down because I'm doing the eggs last. Next for the temperatures is your general meat. You will do that between 375 to 400. So I'm saying burgers, dogs, brats, pork chops, chicken. That's where I do all of that at. I mean, that's my general cooking. I'm cooking potatoes, I'm doing pancakes, I'm doing bacon there. All of that I'm doing, that's my, like your run of the mill temperature is 375 to 400. Over 400, when you wanna sear things, is like smash burgers or searing a steak. Um, I mean, I've seared pork chops and chicken before and then like finished them in my smoker. Um, but mainly it's smash burgers and steak is what you're trying to like get a good sear on. So that's the only time I really go up over 425, 450. Sometimes I go to about 425 on fried rice because I'm putting so much rice on this griddle that it it's going to drop the temp. So sometimes I go up above 425 for fried rice as well. Second thing, how to get your griddle to the proper temperatures. So look, all griddles are different. They're all different. Like I have a four burner Camp Chef and I have a two burner um, Blackstone that's being borrowed right now. But uh, you know, those are totally different. If I put all four burners on high on this one and all four burners on high on my other one, then that's not the same temperature because this is four burners, I'm sorry, and there's two burners on the other one so it doesn't quite get as high. And you may not have a camp chef, maybe you have a Blackstone, maybe you have a um, member's mark, or maybe you have that round Cuisinart thing, and that's all fine. I'm not telling you what griddle to buy, it's just that you're gonna have different temperatures and low, medium, high aren't temperatures. Also, it depends on where you're at, what time of year it is. I'm in Ohio, we're about ready to get an ice storm tomorrow. It's not bad right now, but, um, you know, you could be in Florida or something. So it, it just, you're cooking outside. So that's totally different. So um, you just want to make sure, you know, you can get to the proper temperature. And what I like to do is turn all four burners on low to warm up. I always preheat on low and then keep checking the temperature. 
and then I kind of maybe I'll shut off the outside two ones and just cook with the two middle burners here. So we'll just go two in the middle and then these two outside ones on the outside, I'll shut off. So my heat's like kind of pushing out. But I also know like, all right, I'm cooking in the middle and I got like warming zones on the outside. So, you know, I can like kind of put my burgers in there and I'm doing burgers and I'm doing peppers and onions to put on top of these burgers. Um, and the peppers and onions get done or I'm doing like some gold potatoes uh, there to go with it. And they get done, right? I push them to the warming side so they can stay warm. Or you can buy a little rack and that also can help you stay warm. But that's just a kind of a way to do it of, and you have to learn with your griddle to click things on and off, um, how to get to the proper temperature of what you're gonna cook to. And finally, so how are you gonna, I'm talking about all these temperatures and I'm talking about, you know, how to get to the right temperature and what it should be. How are you gonna know? Well, you need an infrared thermometer. You just gotta have one, I'm sorry. It, it's the, your best friend if you just got a griddle is an infrared thermometer. It's absolutely your best friend. Um, you get used to what medium is on your griddle, what low is, what two burners on and one burner off is. That's how you're going to make sure before you put your eggs down that it's not still 400 from cooking the bacon and potatoes and you don't burn it. They're not that expensive. I'll have a link in the description along with a link to the temperature chart slash five beginner meals. So feel free to grab that. Feel free to go to Amazon and get the temperature thermometer you don't have to get it it isn't an affiliate link but i don't care just go to the store i'm not trying to sell you something i'm just trying to tell you i guarantee you this will help you out a ton in your griddle journey and it'll make things a lot easier at the beginning to kind of know what temperature you are cooking everything at so check out the links in the description thank you so much for watching congratulations again on your brand new griddle i'm sure you'll love it as much as me and my family do